I will begin my testimony by talking about my parents' conversion to the Pentecostal Church Christ Reigns. At the time of their conversions I was 12 and I accompanied my parents to the church. At age 13 I decided to give my life to Jesus and began to sing in the church's worship group. I was with my parents every day in the service but I did not know what a sincere Christian life was. My parents did not testify at home and quarrel almost every day because of television. My father wanted to watch a movie and my mother wanted the news. My parents were the example for my life. Everything they did at home in my conception was right. They said they knew what was right and what was wrong for me. Had my parents be true Christians, I would have been a true Christian by observing their way of life and wanting to learn from them. Those quarreling of my parents to me were normal. I was already used to it and at school I did the same thing. I argued with the students in my class and attacked them even though I was a believer. One night I had a dream. I saw a giant dove flying over my house. The dove said, I am not pleased with your way of life. You must put your house in order. The next day I dreamed the same dream and I told my mother about it, but she could not explain. On the third day I dreamed the same dream and I told my pastor. He said that the Holy Spirit wanted to use me and asked for a repair. The church where I congregated is a ministry focused on praise and worship. Teaching is rare and the pastor does not preach holiness. This was reflected in the life of my parents and the whole church. Three years passed, I and my family still congregated in this church. There was no change in me and I did not feel a difference. I was one of those impious teenagers before I went to church. If I stopped going to church or stopped doing the work, the members and the pastor would call me devious, but the truth is that I never became a member of the church. One day I was walking in the street and God used a woman who is not from my church, actually where I congregated there were no people used that way by God. That woman came and said, God will make you his watchman. I was three years in this ministry and I did not know what conversion was. When I reached 16 the promises of God came to pass in my life, and this is what happened, I heard a soft voice when I was in my room, then I saw the Lord Jesus Christ in my room, I went to meet Jesus who was waiting for me and immediately we entered hell, when we arrived in the abode of the deads, I saw a rich man burning in the fire, the Lord Jesus told that man to tell me why he was there, the rich man said to me, my money held me in material things. The more I had the more I wanted to spend on luxury, pleasure and women, I did not have time to go to church because of the money that brought me well-being, I was traveling the world and I never remembered God. Money was more important to me than Jesus, my money made me forget God and stopped my salvation, I preferred the wealth of the earth rather than the eternal heavenly riches, there is no hope for anyone descending to this place. I beheld in hell the prison system that looks like prison cells from the chains of the earth, souls are tortured inside their cells, they are waiting for the final judgment living in painful torture, Jesus said, servant, the sin of the world imprisons people, whoever does not sacrifice the desires of the flesh, and does not kill the sin that is in the flesh, will come to that place, tell the believers who have fallen in the faith to reflect on their lives, analyze how they have begun the journey and see where they have gone wrong and fallen so that they would start over again from where they left off, in the world there is division between color, race, peoples, religions, rich, poor, but hell plays its part of uniting poor with rich and all peoples, languages and religions, all are united in this place of torment, Jesus showed me people in hell who have deified their money and material possessions. I beheld people who had purchasing power on earth and influences such as presidents, judges, governors, kings, queens, emperors, bankers and businessmen, all these people did not help the poor and when they died they took nothing, leaving everything on earth, these were forgotten when they died, both rich and poor are landing in hell, there is no superiority, all these men left their fortunes and the millionaire are leaving fortunes and now everyone is in a place of eternal misery, when one of these rich people saw Jesus he shouted and said, I would give all my wealth on earth to live a miserable life there, I wanted to go back to earth and be the most despised person there, than to stay in this place of torment, let me go back to earth and be a garbage collector, but do not let me stay here, tell the people of the earth not to go out of their way, 
tell them to help the poor. When I saw this man begging to return to earth I was so sad, people repented in hell but it was too late, in hell there is no separation of classes between rich and poor, everyone mingles in that place, I saw poor, rich, black, brown, white and brown all in one place, all religions, cultures and languages are in that place, people from the time of Abraham and from various times to the present day were here. Jesus took me to a place in hell where I saw a man who was a beggar on the earth, Jesus said, I have sent my servant to this man, and every day he brought food and juice to him, the word was preached by my servant, but he did not want to give his life to me, later he was found dead because of the cold, the blanket this man covering himself was not enough to protect him from the cold, the beggar shouted and said to Jesus, I do not deserve this place for living a miserable life on earth, I deserve heaven this is not fair, this beggar tried to justify himself that he did not deserve hell for living a poor and miserable life on earth, Jesus showed me Christians in hell in various types of prisons, that means they were not freed, they have forgotten to sanctify their lives by looking at the faults of others, they said to Jesus, the shepherd's wife was not sanctified, so we did not need to sanctify ourselves, they knew it was a sin and yet they wanted to copy their leaders, when they were alive they said among themselves we saw the pastor walking in shorts and a sleeveless shirt, if it was a sin he would not walk like that, even the pastor daughter goes to the beach in a bikini, the other group did not sanctify their lives and lived life accusing and judging the wicked saying that they will go to hell, I beheld a shepherd in hell for tolerating sin in his church. He knew of the sin of the people, and yet he did not correct the flock, Jesus said that he touched his heart several times to preach holiness, but he resisted the Holy Spirit, he even used a servant to tell him to preach. He did not repent and did not listen, being rebellious until God's patience reached the limit, death happened to him when he was walking in darkness rejecting the truth. I saw a woman in hell who did not convert to Jesus for seeing defects in all the churches, she walked in a very liberal church and felt ashamed, for she said that the people did not convert because they were equal to those in the world, then she went to a rigid church and could not stand the doctrine, she said it was man's doctrine and did not need all that, she died without making a commitment to salvation, time has passed, death has come and she is in hell, Jesus showed me Christians in hell that instead of helping the deviants to return to God they condemned them by making them move further away from the path of Jesus, when the deviants left the church, these Christians spoke ill of them and criticized them. These backsliders were so hurt that they never returned to the path of Jesus and they promised never to step their feet in any church, those Christians who did this were in hell. Lord Jesus showed me a shepherd in hell for cursing a Christian who left his church to be a member of another, we should not curse what God has created in his image, I saw a girl in hell for masturbating, sometimes she manipulated objects for pleasure, I saw a Christian with tattooed on his body because he did not think it was a sin, the tattoo of demon in his body came out looking the same as the drawing and began to torture that boy in hell, the demon also had a tattoo and looked like a beast. In hell I saw Satan sitting on his throne. He was elegant, but suddenly that good-looking being turned into a horrible monster, and when he looked at the Christians suffering in hell he gave an amazing laugh. He was happy. He told the demons, we're winning against the church, see my victory, look how many Christians are in this place. It's our rewards, the battle to take these souls was difficult but we succeeded, Satan commanded a terrible demon to go to church. The goal is to bring a soul to hell, I saw an ugly demon, of ten feet, rising from hell and traveling to the earth, the Lord Jesus showed me Christians in hell for committing sins in secret without anyone knowing, this group of Christians hid the sins from their shepherds for fear of being corrected, but they could not hide from God, Jesus showed me the earth, I saw thousands of eyes of fire, scattered throughout the four corners of the world, those eyes did not close and I was watching. Jesus said, the eyes of God are all over the earth, and nothing can be hidden from me, the people and laws of the land are unjust, innocents pay for crimes for lack of evidence, but the law of God is just and your measure is right, Jesus showed me the place of false prophets and founders of sects, and on the other side of these founders I saw millions of people whom they brought to hell because of their sects, 
These people cursed the founders of the sects for bringing them into hell. I saw in hell the prophetess Ellen White, Jesus said, she is here in this place for inventing heresies, she prophesied lies and still her connections with the Satanists who helped his ministry grow, she also taught his members to keep the Sabbath, stepping on my grace, whoever wants to live in the law, will have to never sinned, whoever chooses to live in the law will have to save himself from it without committing any sin like me. All the sects that reject my grace steer down the contract of the new covenant, whoever lives on the contract of the old covenant will be cursed and go to hell, Jesus said, this woman Ellen White lied saying there is no hell, she taught people that hell does not exist but when she died she landed in hell, now she is in it, I saw how the demons tormented that woman, the more souls went down to hell because of her teaching, the more she was tormented from the foundation of his sect until now millions of souls are coming to hell, Jesus said, testify more so that souls may come to salvation and ascend into heaven, then we rose from hell to heaven, I landed in a beautiful field full of flowers, a beautiful paradise with a splendidly colorful and gleaming landscape, I saw a city walled with pure and fine gold, I saw fantastic heavenly architecture. The angel came to me and Jesus left us alone, another angel came with a book in his hand and stopped in front. The angel opened the book and showed the date that I converted, but my name was erased by not living a life according to God's will. The angel took another different book that is that of condemnation, and when I saw my name there I started to cry. The angel said, all the names that are written in that book will not inherit eternal life. I wanted very much to live in that place. But my condition of life would not allow me I was unworthy to stay there. The angel told me that I liked looking at the life of others and I did not see the defects of my life. The angel said, it's time to look at your life and see how it stands before God. Suddenly a mirror of gold, whose glass does not exist on earth and shines, that spiritual mirror appeared before me and revealed all my sins. My face was full of wrinkles, my appearance was of an old woman, I wanted to remove those wrinkles to improve my appearance, I was worried because I was only 16 years old. The angel said, do not worry these are the marks of the imperfection caused by sin, although you are young your spirit is old, and is already heading to death, if you dot not born again you will die because sin is shortening your life, your life limit is ending, for the wages of sin is death. These wrinkles are the sin of pride, selfishness, lack of love for God and the wickedness that is in your heart, you consider yourself perfect, you do not accept correction, and you do not correct yourself, you are waiting for God to correct you, do not let this occasion of divine encounter to pass you by you must change your life, I said to the angel I'm so young to die, I'll go first than my parents. The angel said, for God the age on earth means nothing. Your lifespan is measured in the heaven, your spiritual appearance is of an old woman who is almost dying, this is because of sin that is shortening your life, when I was on earth I did not accept church people to praise better than me, the devil used me to ridicule the servants of God, putting defects and fault where they were not, I never qualified and recognized the people that God used, I envy and wanted to be equal with these people but I did not admit the reality of seeing people being used by God, I did not accept this situation, deep in my heart I knew I did not have the privilege of being like them, this corroded inside me, I was proud and I did not accept to be the worst of them all, the angel made me know my faults, I repented of everything, he preached to me the true doctrine that a servant of God must know, these were teachings that my church never spoke about. The angel said now go back to the earth, when he finished saying that word my spirit was back in my body, I stood up from the ground, I saw the woman who brought me the prophecy and said you will change your life, the conversion came to me for the first time after three years of attending the church, that woman said goodbye to me and left, she was a person sent by God who made me understand what God wanted from me, I went to church and told my pastor about my experience. He was offended when I said that the whole church was in sin. The entire congregation began to persecute me, I was humiliated, they said that I wanted to be too holy, the pastor said that I was in delirium and heresy to destroy his ministry, I looked at the face of the shepherd that was filled with hatred, 
his face transfigured into the face of a horrible monster, when I looked at the whole church, their faces were that of monsters, the Holy Spirit spoke in my mind and said they have lost the image and likeness of God and they have assumed the face and likeness of their master for whom they serve, the pastor took me out of the worship group, I could no longer sing, no one else spoke to me, I was being despised by everyone, I was a stranger among these people, I returned to the house and my parents who said to me, you should not have spoken about your experiences to the pastor and the church and he rebuked me, I said, are you going to believe in me or the pastor? My mother said, daughter, you have undergone such a beautiful spiritual change, you are no longer a rebellious girl with your parents, because of your change I will believe you not the pastor, my father said that the pastor is the authority of the church and that we cannot rebel against the one that God had anointed with his so authority on earth. My father said, if the pastor is wrong God will certainly show me, that same night my father dreamed of the whole church, the pastor preached in the pulpit and everything was dark, lacking energy, in that dream my father looked to the side where I was sitting and he saw a light that was on top of my head, when that light touched my head, my body shone all over and shone like a star, my body began to rise through the ceiling and disappeared. The whole church was terrified and they said Jesus has come back for his church and we are left behind, the Lord has already snatched his chosen ones, when my father woke up from this dream he was scared. He hugged me and apologized to me. The pastor excluded me from his church, I prayed to God and asked him to show me a church that speaks of the truth, later the Lord revealed to me, God prepared a serious church for me and my family, years passed and my parents grew old. I got a good age to marry, I was engaged to a man of God and had to travel and leave my parents to live with him, the wedding was marked, my fiancé's father had given him a gift home that would be our home, my parents are of advanced ages and alone with no one to care for, I had to make a decision to take care of them or get married and leave to live a happy life, I could not take them with me, and any decision I made would have to give someone happiness and other would be in pain. I chose not to marry which was my dream despite loving my fiancé, I could not leave my parents to have no weight on my conscience that would cause a wound in me, my parents were sick and walked very slowly, I have to fill the void of sorrow filling up with Holy Spirit, since I had lost a man of God, I learned to live with the thorns of the road, I faced the opposition for Jesus' sake, I won young people for Jesus who lived in prostitution, in the vice of alcohol and tobacco. I was preaching the word of God and I had a revelation from a girl who wanted to stop attending the services and leaving the church because of her friends who spoke ill of her, I asked the girl if there's another church near her house, she replied, not only this church, I said, do not leave, only pray and God will operate, a few days passed and her friends stopped chasing after him, walking away from the church, the girl was alone and remain in the church, we should never lay off the hand of the plough because of one's faults, we should not condemn all because of one flawed, in any church, company, school or place will encounter problems, what we find today is the leadership of the church valuing each other and we have to get used to these failures, others try to draw attention in the church by doing something to be seen by everyone within the church, workers leave the church because they feel jealous of the pastor and others leave the church for not receiving the opportunity to serve, this should not happen, then I saw two believers arguing, one said, I'm not going to church anymore so that I will not see the face of this person anymore, the other replied, I will no longer congregate in the church, there is no more climate for me to stay in this place, I have seen all this through the churches where I am going to preach, I'm not a preacher just a servant who does the will of God that is to preach the gospel to all, people disagree and forget that Jesus does not like it, many Christians seek trouble for their lives, through their attitudes, decisions and practices without Jesus' direction, I close my testimony, may God bless the church Amen.